You want to give him a good... and welcome back. Today I have a fun project for you to sew up. It's really simple, it's really easy, and it takes less than 10 minutes. We're gonna sew boxer shorts. Since today is Halloween and I know my personal little sewing circle of friends is um, really exhausted from preparing for Halloween with costumes and whatnot, and sometimes you just need a quick little project. So I came up with a really easy way to get that um, quick self-satisfaction out of sewing a garment. I have uploaded the piece for this pattern to my website. I will link it in the description and you can go get it for free. And we can all sew along together today. So after you get your pieces, download, print, assemble, pick out some fabric and let's get sewing. Before we get started, I want to go through the fabric types with all of you. These I made with flannel from Joann's. I'm not sure if they have it still on their site, but I will try to link it if they do. Flannel's good for winter months, but there are a ton of other fabrics that you can use for this pattern. You can go all out and get fancy with a silk fabric, or you can just grab some regular old cotton wool from your stash. You can even do this pattern with knit fabric, but if doing that, I would suggest going down a size or two just because knit is so stretchy anyway. So sticking with the theme of keeping this short and sweet, let's get started. Today in honor of Halloween, I found this really cute cotton woven from Joann's that are zombie pinups that I will be using for this tutorial today. Okay, to cut your fabric, you're going to place the pattern piece and the fabric right sides up and cut one out around the entire piece. Then you're also going to grab another piece of fabric, lay it right sides up, and then you're gonna flip the pattern piece over and cut it out like this. That way you'll end up with two mirrored pieces, which is um, instructed on the pattern piece to cut two mirrored. And then you're also going to need a um, strip of elastic. I suggest um, an inch and a half wide. You can always use an inch or whatever you want to use for the waistband. And you're going to cut that to the length that it shows you in the um, cut chart that's right on the pattern piece. And you're done cutting. Before we go any further, I just wanted to pop in and remind you of a very important step, which is to wash your fabric. I don't know if I've mentioned this on any of my other videos, but it is so, so important, especially if you're using a cotton-based fabric. Some fabrics shrink a little bit, but cotton shrinks a lot. So please do not skip this step. Always pre-wash your fabric just the way you would if you were doing a load of laundry. So now that your pieces are cut out, you're going to sew along this crotch curve right here and along this other back crotch curve here. And then you're going to finish those seams. With knit, you can always skip the finishing step because knit does not ravel. But when you're working with a woven, you definitely, definitely always want to finish your seams. Okay, so when we talk about finishing seams, um, you can see that my um, crotch seams are sewn. Um, the easiest way, obviously, is to use a serger and it will finish those seams automatically when you're sewing. But if you do not have a serger and you want to finish it, you can do um, a straight stitch all along here and then run a zigzag stitch on the seam allowance. It will, um, your fabric will ravel just a little bit when it hits, but it will stop when it hits um, these zigzags. Or a third option, which is really easy, is to take a pinking shears like these, and you can cut um, just along the um, seam allowance, just like, it'll look kind of like this zigzag stitch, but it will be cut. And any way is fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and serge this seam now because that's just my favorite way to do it. Now that both crotch seams are sewn, we're going to um, open this up and place the crotch um, or the inseam edges together. So you'll spread those out and you're gonna do this right sides together as well. You'll see this edge down here. Here's your crotch seam. 
Here's the crotch seam on the other side, and you're gonna place um, those edges together. You're gonna line up this seam right here, and you're gonna pin that, pin that together, and then you're gonna sew along the inseam. Okay, now we're going to turn our um, boxers right side out, and we're going to hem the leg openings. And I've already pressed um, my hems, so you can see this here, but you're going to fold over one half an inch, fold over another half an inch, and then you're going to sew um, very, very close to this edge right here. Um, another step that gets overlooked quite a bit is pressing your hems. There is nothing that will kill the professional look of a finished garment than not pressing your seams. You definitely don't wanna go in hemming, just sitting down to your machine and folding over as you go. Pre-pressing your hems will leave them nice and even all the way around, and then you won't get any puckering or wrinkles. And most of the time, I will go ahead and press it again after the hem is sewn. So here's what your stitching will look like on the wrong side of the fabric, and this is what your hem will look like on the outside once it's finished. Before we do the waistband, I'm going to go through a couple of options for you if you don't want to do it the way that it's instructed. That's just the way I like to do it because it's the fastest way for me personally, but you definitely, definitely can finish off the top of those boxers any way you want to. You can use um, decorative elastics like this one that I got from Sincerely Riley a long time ago. I know there's different types of these stretch elastics, I've seen um, lace crocheted stretch elastics. You just wanna make sure that it does have pretty good stretch and recovery. And you might just wanna wrap it around um, your hips to get the length if you're not using the one and a half inch elastic that is in the pattern. Or you can even put um, just a regular knit yoga band on it if that's more comfortable. Obviously a pattern is just a guideline. You can definitely finish these any way you want to. Okay, so now we're going to add the waistband and you're gonna take your elastic and you're gonna overlap it um, by about 3 eighths of an inch and you're gonna run a straight stitch back and forth a couple of times just to secure it in place. I also want to mention when using um, elastic for waistbands or cuffs or anything like that, especially when it's this thick non-roll elastic, you wanna give them a good stretch and workout before you sew them into your garment just to kind of break them in. So before you attach your ends together, just give it a couple quick pulls. Now we're gonna mark the elastic waistband into quarters. So make sure one pin or clip is on the seam of the elastic. Okay, now you're gonna mark your boxers into quarters too, and you're gonna make sure that the first two clips are on the crotch seams of the boxers, and then you're going to place your elastic um, to the wrong side of the boxers, lining up all four um, clips. And then when you go to sew this, you're gonna to have to stretch the elastic as you sew. You can either serge it, or you can straight stitch it and finish your seam, and once that is finished, your elastic will now be connected to um, your fabric of your boxers. So as you sew around the top of your boxers, you're going to make sure that you pull this elastic tight and sew along. And you can see on the other edge where it's sewn on, it's starting to gather just a little bit. So now that your elastic is sewn to your boxers, you wanna make sure that this edge is finished and you're gonna fold this down and clip it into place like this so that the edge of the elastic is right at the edge of this fold. And then you're gonna sew um, along this seam allowance with a zigzag stitch. And you're gonna have to stretch your elastic just like we did um, whenever we were attaching it to the boxers. So here is the look of the finished waistband. You can see it zigzag stitched and the seam allowance is stitched down on the inside and it gives it kind of um, a gathered look across the top. And here is the finished pair of boxers. That was so easy, right? Now I'm gonna try a knit version and I'm gonna time myself to see if I can actually do it in 10 minutes.
just a few things about altering the fit. Um, if you did want a higher rise or a lower rise, all you would have to do is cut this edge either lower for a lower rise or when you have it on your fabric, you can cut it an inch or two higher um, at the top. And if the inseam length is too short for you, all you have to do is extend out the line of the inseam and cut this longer for that um, modification. And you can even cut them shorter if you aren't happy with how short they are. So I hope you love this tutorial and I hope you love your new boxers. I love, love, love sewing projects like this. Like when I'm kind of in a funk with sewing and I'm not really sure what project I want to start on next. I just do something really easy and it kind of gets the creative juices flowing again. So let me know what you think about the new boxer shorts that are on our site in the comments. So now I'm going to announce the winner of our 2000 subscriber giveaway that I posted last week. This is a winner of all of the patterns, the 12 yard mystery box from Sincerely Riley, some paper, some glue, and a new set of shears. And the winner is Awkwardly Majestic on Instagram. I'm going to go ahead and reply to your comment on Instagram. You just need to email George and Ginger with your shipping address and we will get all of the information and your prizes out to you. So I hope you all had fun sewing boxer shorts with me today. I had a lot of fun making this pattern and I was so excited to share it with all of you. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and I hope you all have an amazing Halloween. Make sure you're subscribed and give this video a thumbs up and I will be back with a new video next Thursday. Bye!